Good morning everybody. I am Professor Muhammad Wasim Akram. Welcome to all of you in my video lecture series. I have been teaching this course for the last 12 years. These video lectures will be very useful to the students of civil engineering. So keep watching, like, comment, share and subscribe our channel. Thank you. Dear students, today we will learn about how to determine the consistency of the soil. We will learn about the detailed procedure of liquid limit, plastic limit and shrinkage limit. Before going into the detail of the various steps to determine these consistencies, let us define the term consistency. Actually consistency is a term which is used to describe the degree of firmness of a soil in a quantitative manner using descriptions such as soft, medium, firm, stiff or hard. It indicates the relative ease with which a soil can be deformed. In practice, the property of consistency is associated only with fine grain soil, especially clay. The physical properties of clay are considerably influenced by the amount of water present in them. Depending upon the water content, the following four stages liquid limit, plastic. Uh, sorry, liquid state, plastic state, semi solid state, and solid states are used to describe the consistency of clay. The boundary water content at which the soil undergoes a change from one state to another are called consistency limit. Here we can see the stages in the different states solid and semi-solid. The boundary water content is WS that is called shrinkage limit. Here from se semi-solid to plastic the boundary water content is called plastic limit. Here from plastic to liquid the boundary water content is called liquid limit. In 1911 a Swedish soil scientist Atterberg first demonstrated the significance of these limits Hence, they are also known as Atterberg limits. These limits of water content, though empirical in nature, are of great significance in understanding the behavior of clays. When a fine grain soil is mixed thoroughly with a large quantity of water, the resulting suspension is in liquid state and offers practically no resistance to flow. In other words, the soil has virtually no strength. If the water content of the suspension is gradually reduced, keeping the consistency of the sample uniform, a stage comes when it just begins offering resistance to flow. This is the stage when the sample Sample changes from possessing no sharing strength to having an infinitesimal shear strength and changes from the liquid to plastic state. The boundary water content between the liquid state and the plastic state is called liquid limit. In the plastic state, the soil can be molded to different shape without rupture it due to its plasticity. If the soil is, if the water content is further reduced, the clay sample changes from the plastic state to the semi-solid state at the boundary water content which is called plastic limit. In the semi-solid state, the soil does not have plasticity, it becomes brittle. When pressure is applied, the soil simply crumbles. 
up to the semi solid state the soil remains fully saturated and any reduction in the volume of water will result in a in an almost equal reduction in the volume of the soil mass a further reduction uh, in the water content however brings about the state when the uh, when with a decrease in moisture the volume of the soil mass the volume of the soil mass does not decreases any further but remains the same the sample changes from semi solid to solid state and the boundary water content is called shrinkage limit below this limit below this limit the sample begins to dry up at the surface and the soil is no large longer fully saturated and the color of the sample begins to change so we have learned the boundary water content at which the soil undergoes a changes from one state to another state are called consistency limits here we can see in the figure the different limits which we have just learned earlier so liquid limit is it is the water content at which a soil is practically in a liquid state but has infinitesimal resistance against flow which can be measured by any standardized procedure today we will learn this standard procedure of determining the liquid limit the water content at which a soil would just begin to crumble when rolled into a thread of approximately 3 mm dia is called plastic limit shrinkage limit is the maximum water content at which a decrease in moisture content does not cause any decrease in the volume of the soil mass and this is called shrinkage limit till now we had ju just learn about the consistency of soil the different stages the definition of liquid limit plastic limit and shrinkage limit now come to the main topic of this video that is determination of these limits first we will learn about determination of liquid limit liquid limit of the soil can be determined in the laboratory so it's a laboratory method by using an apparatus designed by a casa grande as shown in the figure the apparatus consists of a vulcanized rubber com compound base with a brass cup suitably mounted the brass cup can be raised and made to fall on the rubber base through a cam arrangement operated by a handle the height of fall of the brass cup can be adjusted with the help of an adjusting screw before the start of the test the height of the fall of the cup is adjusted at 10 mm a grooving tool is used to cut a groove in the pad of soil placed in a cup in the cup two types of grooving tools are in use these are casa grande tool which cuts groove of 2 mm width at bottom 11 mm width at the top and 8 mm deep another groove is astm tool which cuts a groove 2 mm wide at the bottom 13.6 mm uh, wide at the top and 10 mm deep the selection of the grooving tool depends upon the type of the soil for a, for a soil of low plasticity the astm grooving tool is preferred so let us discuss the detailed test procedure for determining the liquid limit number 1 about 120 g of air dried soil passing through isc 425 micron is taken and mixed with water such that the soil attains a putty like consistency a portion of the paste is placed in the cup and is labeled so as to have maximum depth about 10 mm now a groove is cut in the soil placed in the cup using the grooving tool 
the handle is rotated at the rate of two revolutions per second and the number of blows necessary to close the groove for a distance of 13 mm is noted about 10 gram of soil near the closed groove is taken to determine its water content repeat the steps 1 to 5 by altering the water content after that a graph is plotted between number of blows n on a logarithmic scale and water content w on a natural scale the water content corresponding to 25 number of blows is liquid limit here on in the x axis number of blows n is taken on log scale and here in y axis water content is plotted on normal scale so the this curve is on semi logarithmic scale the curve between water content and number of blows is called flow curve flow curve is a straight line here this curve is plotted by diff at different water content and number of blows water content number of blows so this curve we join the from here to here we will get a straight line and that curve is flow curve now corresponding to 25 number of blows suppose it hits the graph here now we will draw a parallel line here this water content is called liquid limit and this is the uh, method to find out the liquid limit from Casagrande apparatus remember from the definition of liquid limit all soil possesses the same value of sharing strength at liquid limit and it is about 27 gram per centimeter square this is about 27 gram per centimeter square attempt have also been made to develop empirical relation which enable the determination of liquid limit from only one observation in this method the following equation is used wn is equal to wn n by 25 to the power e where wn is water content at which n blows are required for the group to close and e is an index which varies from 0 0.068 to 0 0.121 a medium value of 0 0.1 is assumed for e when the number of blows n varies from 20 to 30 the one point method can be used only for approximate estimation of the liquid limit the standard small size laboratory cones have also been used for the determination of liquid limit Indian standard describe the cone penetrometer method for liquid limit determination now we will discuss the different steps to find out the plastic limit of the clay first of all we have to take 15 gram of air dried soil passing through IS 425 micron sieve and mix with sufficient quantity of water a portion of the soil is taken and rolled on a glass plate with the palm into a thread of uniform diameter when a diameter of 3 mm is reached the soil is remolded in, in a ball the process of making the thread and remolding is continued till the thread at a die of 3 mm just start crumbling some of the crumbled portion of the thread is kept in the oven for water content then the test is repeated with fresh samples the average of three values of water content is taken as the plastic limit now let us discuss about shrinkage limit determination the different steps involved is as follows 
अबाउट थर्टी ग्राम ऑफ सॉइल पासिंग थ्रू इंडियन स्टैंडर्ड सीब ऑफ फोर ट्वेंटी फाइव माइक्रोन स्टेक इन इन एन एवापोरेटिंग डिश देन द सॉइल इज मिक्स विद सफिशेंट क्वान्टिटी ऑफ वाटर टू ब्रिंग द सॉइल टू ए कंसिस्टेंसी दैट इट मे फ्लो The soil mixture is placed in the shrinkage dish in three equal quantities so as to fill the dish. Then the excess soil is removed and the dish is weighed with soil. The soil pad is allowed to dry in the air till the color of the pad changes from dark to light. The dish is then placed in an oven at 110 degrees Celsius. till its weights become constant the shrinkage dish dish is weighed with dry sample and the dry weight of the soil is determined by mercury displacement method the shrinkage limit is calculated as shown below these figures represent the soil sample in plastic state which fills the container of known volume v1 and has a weight w1 as figure a as the sample is gradually dried the water content at certain stages become equal to the shrinkage limit as shown in the figure b at this point the volume decreases to v2 the corresponding weight begin being w2 the sample is still in saturated state Beyond the shrinkage limit the sample continues to dry with no further volume decrease until it reaches the dry state as represented in the figure C at this stage the dry weight of the soil W S and its volume V2 are measured hence the sh shrinkage limit SL is the water content at figure B so shrinkage limit will be weight of water divided by weight of the dry soil we can calculate weight of water is equal to w1 minus ws minus v1 minus v2 into gamma w hence shrinkage limit is equal to w1 minus ws minus v1 minus v2 into gamma w divided by ws into 100 because it is represented in percentage the terms w1 v1 and v2 are as shown in the figure discussed above and gamma w is unit weight of water that is a fixed value either we can take it as 1 g per cc or 9.8 kN per meter cube so this is all about the consistency limit determination especially we discussed about shrinkage limit plastic limit and liquid limit so thank you thanks for watching